in terms of your work with media companies, how do you see them uh, in the current landscape? How are they transitioning from uh, old media to new media? Well, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I think we both have a lot to say yeah, on that one. The, it's, a lo- it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loaded question. It's a very difficult question. Um, and there is some hard realities. There is, I would, I would say that the majority of traditional media companies are in what I call hospice. They are dying. Now, they are dying because of inability to understand the new landscape and unwillingness to embrace change. Those that are embracing the new landscape and those that are willing to embrace change are transforming themselves just as a phoenix would. And we see new media companies springing up all over the place and really redefining the landscape. What do you think? Well, I think that um, certainly it is absolutely true that most media companies that we've uh, been engaged with, either because we've worked for them or we uh, are involved in media all the time, have really, really struggled over the last 10 years. And as Chris says, some of that has been resistance to change. Um, there's a famous quote that I picked up from someone, and, and uh, I'd love to attribute it to whoever I picked it up from, but I still can't remember who it's from, which is that uh, there, are, there are three types of uh, media company uh, CEOs or people running media companies. Those who say um, reality doesn't exist, those who say reality exists but only after I retire, and those who say that um, reality does exist and I must do something about it. And there are a few companies, um, we could probably see them all, name them. Um, I, I might call out, for example, Meredith and Hearst that have done you know, aggressive transformations online, um, uh, who are in the reality exists and I'm gonna deal with it camp. But most of it, uh, frankly, there's a lot of reality exists but only after I retire. And, uh, and then there's the, the, the further fact that in technology, I think we have had a fantasy that everything is going to be Google and everything is going to be Apple. And it probably is true that media companies can, and there's been a lot of consolidation in media uh, so that everybody's sort of running quarter to quarter and sort of hoping that they're going to somehow media is going to transform into the next you know, Google or Apple. And, and the truth is you could probably run a really good uh, media business online. You can probably make good money online uh, as you transform your company from traditional print or traditional analog, whatever you want to call it, to online. But I don't think that anybody who owns a magazine company or a broadcast company is headed for a Facebook I- IPO. Not that the Facebook IPO is a great example, but you know I don't think we're headed to those kinds of dollars online. So. So that's, that's the reality of the online space. Now, a couple more points. Um, one is that um, adverti- a lot of folks are talking about the transformation of content online and what sectors, where and how that's been most successful. And I think, for example, you can make an argument that the music industry did not do that successfully. And the book I- industry with uh, you know, Jeff Bezos at the lead and the Kindle, you know, even though we all know the Sony Reader came first, the Kindle really sort of, uh, for all intents and purposes, inventing the true uh, consumer ebook. And then that has been a, a transformation of content online that has been more successful. Although you could, although uh, you know, publishing, uh, uh, owner, uh, publishing company owners that I've seen uh, do presentations are still banging their fist on the table saying the Kindle ebook should come out a year after the hardcover book, which is just, you know, ridiculous. So, so there's some uh, industries that have done it uh, more successfully than others. I think it is yet to be seen whether television is going to do it successfully. And I have a lot of concern about the, uh, the exposure that I have had to media companies and broadcast companies um, where, you know, Look, guys, you know the ebook was coming, and people said, "No, no, 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 the ebook's not coming," and it came. Uh, people said online music was coming, and it came. People said nobody will ever read online, and they did. And television is going to be delivered over IP, and it's coming. And there's that famous quote from Bill Gates that says, "We vastly overestimate what's going to happen in the short term, the next two years, and we vastly underestimate what's going to happen in the the long to me- medium to long term, in the next ten years." 
So television's coming over IP, and it's yet to be seen how broadcast people are going to deal with that. Based on what we see uh, right now, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, wouldn't lend one hope that that, is, that that transition is going to be uh, as good, for example, as the book transition. There is, there is unwillingness to take risk for some, for some reason. The, the, and the, the, we have lost our capacity to take risk, possibly because we are so focused on money, 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 everything, and we've lost our capacity to take creative risk. The, the great giants of media of the past are gone and have left us with a dearth of risk taking. Where are the executives right now sitting at the major media companies and saying, okay, it is unquestionably clear that what's coming is individualized channels. It's not going to be channel four anymore or channel seven anymore. It's going to be Chris's channel and Anna's channel and Charlene's channel. What are we doing to enable these people to make that happen? How are we going to be the first people that are the content producers and content distributors of the new age that enable the consumer to make that happen? And furthermore, how do we work with our advertisers to make that successful? Uh, in, in, in the business to business world, uh, people that are in the business to business world, publishers and content producers in the business to business world, have it somewhat easier because business to business has a better defined audience, the audience needs are better understood, and you can create content and distribute content in a much more uh, easily understood way. So we, you don't have to take great leaps of faith. But in the consumer world, you have to take great leaps of faith. Great media has always been created by great leaps of faith, not by sitting on the sidelines and trying to figure out what your stock price is doing tomorrow. There's another uh, aspect, so, so I just spent a little bit of time beating up on media companies for not um, sort of getting with it. Uh, I also think that we need to beat up on uh, the advertising agency holding companies a little bit because, uh, and I think I can, I can sort of microcosm this and we can say um, BuzzFeed, which is a fabulous case study of, uh, you know, I mean, everyone knows Buzz, BuzzFeed, the, best, the site that does the best cute kittens on the internet. But BuzzFeed is really making a transition into more journalistic content and becoming more of a media site. And, they, and they're hiring journalists and they're trying to do that. So great. So this is, a, this is an example of content that's really being transformed and, and going with the trend of the internet. What are advertisers to make of this? So, I mean, in one way it's a great story for advertisers, whether you take Gillette on BuzzFeed, which is a good example of all these cool pictures using Gillette razors. But this content is unique content to BuzzFeed. An advertiser has to gear up an entire effort, just like making a Facebook page, to edit, to creating the content, to understanding what the BuzzFeed universe is, to editing the content so that they can develop an advertising project product just for this site. So we were talking about big data a minute ago, and you're going to have all of these behavioral demographics, and we're talking about online uh, uh, TV over IP, and we're talking about Chris's channel. Well, my question is, just exactly how, how are uh, brands supposed to get their arms around how to advertise in this new medium? We can barely deliver all of the advertising units in the IAB standard uh, portfolio, uh, the, the point rolls and the page takeovers, and you talk to anyone in ad ops and this is already a hairball. So now we're supposed to take big data and crunch it to deliver an advertising unit to Chris's channel that's specifically geared to a, a man in a specific demographic who's interested in cars and electronics. The, it's, it's not just the media companies. They're struggling to produce content in a cost-effective way. Fair enough. That's a tough thing, and they haven't done it very, very well, and we lay that at their feet. But how about the people who are supposed to be helping the people who sell product develop their advertising so it works in the new content medium? So as a very wise person who I often quote just has said, um, I, I actually think it was Rashad Tabakawala who, who said at a, a, an OPA conference, advertisers do not get up in the morning and say, how do I sponsor content? They get up in the morning and say, how do I sell 
my product. And if content and the content world has become way too complex for them to develop products that can somehow fit into the new content world, like these custom BuzzFeed sort of pages, and it becomes way easier to slap an advertisement on a billboard or on a NASCAR or in Google AdWords, that's what they're going to do. And then what happens to content? So we have to figure out the two things simultaneously. Content is becoming more complex and customized and delivered digitally, and advertising that's going to use all of that big data and all of that behavioral uh, stuff and be very custom to the platform, that has to change too. And those two things are big and cost money. And a lot of folks are putting their fingers in their ears and going, la, 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 because it's very, very difficult.